to introduce recent advances in the field. The conference will be a successful catalyst in promoting research work, sharing views and innovative ideas. It is our privilege and honor to welcome you all, especially to those who have traveled a long distance to our lovely city Lucknow. We wish you a very success with this important conference and hope that you all will have fruitful and rewarding exchanges in the next few days. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin anything auspicious, we always light the lamp. May I request all the dignitaries seated on the dais to kindly light the auspicious lamp. Carlos to join you as the part of the organizing duties. Professor Redim and Professor Carlos, the co-conference chair of this conference. Is Carlos here? Yeah. Can you join us? You are part of the organizing team. Yeah. So, uh, can we have a round of applause for Redim and Carlos who are conference co-chairs?
We would now like the felicitation ceremony to begin. I request Honorable Vice Chancellor AKTU Professor Vinay Kumar Patan to please felicitate Padma Sri Award Professor Manin Agrawal, Deputy Director, IIT Kanpur. He has received awards Padma Sri 2013, Infosys Prize 2008, Golden Prize 2006, Sani Sharu Bhattaga Award 2003, and much more. A big round of applause, please. Professor Deo Sarkar, Project Director, TechQuip 3, Dabatu, Lonele, Maharashtra. So, a big round of applause, please. Chief Guest, 
प्रोफेसर मनिंदर अग्रवाल पद्मश्री डिप्टी डायरेक्टर आईडी काम में ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर डॉक्टर बी जे अब्दुल कलाम टेक्निकल यूनिवर्सिटी डॉक्टर विनय कुमार पाठ है प्रोफेसर एस एन सिंह ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर मदन मोहन मालवीय यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी गोरखपुर एंड द चेयरमैन आई ट्रिपल ई इंडिया काउंसिल प्रोजेक्ट डायरेक्टर एक्यूब थ्री डॉक्टर देव सरकर फ्रॉम लोने महाराष्ट्र डॉक्टर बाबा साहब भीमराव अम्बेडकर यूनिवर्सिटी डायरेक्टर कैस डॉक्टर आशीष चेयरमैन आई ट्रिपल ई यूपी सेक्शन और फाइनेंस कंट्रोलर जी पी सिंह और एक्स्ट्रा श्री नंदाल जी कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑर्गेनाइजर द टीम द डेलीगेट्स हु हैव कम ऑल अक्रॉस द ग्लोब टू दिस कैंपस फैकल्टी मेंबर ऑल डियर स्टूडेंट्स इट्स ए ग्रेट डे टूडे वेन वी ऑर्गेनाइजिंग An international conference on contemporary computing and application, jointly with the University and the UT, Gorakhpur, and Baba Sahab Ambedkar University, Lonere, Maharashtra. This conference is supported and funded by Technical Education Quality Improvement Program Phase Three of MHRD, Government of India. Lucknow is a very vibrant city. It's not only the capital of Uttar Pradesh. Many activities unfold. Many activities going together in a parallel mode. Defence Expo is going on in a full swing, inaugurating today for next three days. And so far, we have our conference going for three days today here, where the 40 delegates. Forty defence representatives are presenting and participating in this defence expo. There are eighteen countries participants. Thirty-two, thirty-two speakers from the three continents of the eighteen countries are. Participating in this conference, we welcome all to this grand inaugural ceremony of IC3A 2020 at AKTU campus. There will be multiple plenary sessions, and I am being told 68 papers will be presented in next three days. Around 80 plus papers, which are being selected, over 400 papers, which is around 22 percent of the selection, speaks of the quality of this conference. For this conference, there will be a focus on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and Industry 4.0. There will be multiple opportunities. for our students and faculty members to interact with the people who are the front runners into the area of technology they are working in and to jointly collaborate and to work to bring the substantial outcome into the area of research which will be helping to the mankind with these words i welcome all once again to the campus of aktu <coughs> All best wishes. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I now request all the dignitaries on the dais to please release the conference booklet.
Thank you so much, sir. I request Professor Amitya Dutta, Conference Chair ICA 2020, to address the gathering and raise the curtain from, for commencement of the conference. Professor Don Hong, oh, 
I, I mentioned. <laughs> Professor Fred Chubini, University of Nebraska Lincoln, United States. <laughs> Professor Suresh Subramanian, George Washington University, United States. He will be reaching today evening. <laughs> Professor Anna Sophia, University of Iceland, Iceland, she is here. <laughs> Professor Israel Korean, University of Massachusetts, United States. Professor Jason Okane, University of South Carolina, United States. <laughs> Professor Zenopon Kotsokos, Vanderbilt University, United States. Thank you guys for your difficult name. <laughs> Professor Lango Balasinga, Norwegian University of Science and Technology, Norway. <laughs> Professor Gre Gregor Rosane, Slovak University of Technology, Bratislava, European Union. <laughs> Professor Harold Pardu, University of South Alabama, United States. <laughs> Just trying to check if I missed anyone because I hope I covered. Okay, great. Okay, so. Uh... Oh, sorry. I, I, uh, I missed Professor Jean Beery from uh, Havana Champion Illinois University. He's a very senior professor, and uh, I thank him two times because he's traveling the second time on my reverse. Professor, thank you so much for being there. And I'm a little less organized in this. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll quickly, you know, I'll take five minutes to explain you the story behind this conference. Is you know, uh, if you really see, if you really see. The buzzword or the or the or the futuristic technology that actually galores at us is is none other than computing and its application in different science, technology, commerce, management, anywhere in your life. For starting, you know, you when you finding a friend or uh, ordering a medicine or you know uh, getting your car for servicing or anything anything that is involved in our regular life, daily life, is dependent on high speed computing. I think. I think nobody can deny an electrical engineer, a mechanical engineer, a, 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 a biologist, a microbiologist, a nanoscientist, anyone, a, a management graduate, a photo management graduate, anyone has to depend on the power of computing. So nobody can deny this. I have been talking with delegates, industry, researchers, professors, directors, and everybody said has agreed that this indeed this theme of the conference, the contemporary computing and its application in different areas, is indeed a requirement and of this particular time. So we kept this uh, theme and uh, of course we are a technical university, we have got students in various uh, various areas of discipline. So to accommodate students from an electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, we have, we have kept this uh, conference pretty wide so anyone who is working on computing, simulation and other stuff can do participate and get benefited from this conference. Now, a quick summary: We got around 400 general, uh, regular paper submission. It was uh, it was uh, it underwent a peer review process, and uh, finally 82 of them were accepted. So uh, some 22 percent was the acceptance ratio, which is quite low and speaks good about the uh, review process and the quality of the proceeding. So every uh, every participant, every delegate who has come to present their paper, uh, please be assured that you, your paper was definitely accepted on technical merit and congratulations to all of you to get your paper accepted and come to this conference. Now, uh, now uh, if you really see uh, how, let's say, if, if the, the, the young graduates, the, the BTEC students, the MS students who are here, and you're pursuing a career in, in, in computing and, it, and it's relevant and it's relevant field. How do you prepare yourself for the challenges in industry, in academics, in research? So this platform, this this conference, this platform may give you enough, uh, you know, thoughtfulness, enough uh, ideas, generate networking, generate professional collaboration, and that's what is that's what this conference is meant for. You know. Uh, I would like to thank many, taking name is difficult, maybe I'll come back to the validity session and thank everyone in person, but of course I would like particularly to thank that team of motivated students who has been working so hard and every keynote speaker and everyone had their good words for them and they said these students are wonderful. Can we have a huge round of applause for the volunteer students who have been working so hard to put things in place and without the support of this, of this young motivated students, 
this would not have been possible. Please understand, there were support staff, there were, stu there were students, you know, uh, speakers were landing at 2 a.m. in in, in, in uh, Indira Gandhi Airport, International Airport Delhi, and there was a student, there was a staff who was attending them, taking them to their guest house and making the onward flight, onward road trip to uh, Lucknow. So, you know, without the, without the support of these motivated students and motivated staff, it would not have been possible to take this year. I welcome you once again. I wish you that the next three days, the next three days you have got, uh, you, 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 you have enough deliberations, discussions, brainstorming sessions, networking sessions, where you collaborate, take ideas and go back and enrich with wonderful ideas. There are 32, there are 32 uh, uh, plenary sessions in eight, uh, sorry, 32 plenary talks in eight sessions. The registration was open to all the university, though it was a free registration because Ticket Free had funded it. So I, I, I'm so proud to tell you that 4,500 students have registered to listen to the keynote talks and uh, of course uh, the inclination were more towards the artificial intelligence and the other talks but of course there, there was more, I mean there was registration in all the sessions so I wish the participants who have come, uh, I mean uh, the participants who have come to listen to this talk, you go back and reach and uh, today also, today we have a panel discussion, a curtain riser panel discussion in the later afternoon to the from this. So the first talk for this, uh, today's uh, first talk will be given, delivered by pro uh, conference co-chair Professor Radim Burgett. He works on AI, so it will be an interesting talk later in the afternoon and followed by a talk by Professor Cesar Olympi. He, 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 he works on, uh, you know, unstructured data and deep learning stuff, which maybe the audience may be very interested. Followed by a panel discussion of 12 to 13 panelists will be sitting there and will be telling you stories how and uh, and where the computing area lead to and I, I wish that such discussions, such deliberations will definitely help you in your future, you know, uh, career prospects and plan your things better way. So once again, I thank everyone and above all, you know, it's, it's, there's no words to thank our own Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Vinay Kumar Bhattar. Without his, you know, if you really understand, you know, I, I have been a private system for a long, long time. Getting things done is relatively easy in a private system. Putting things in place is easy. Without the help of our own Honorable Vice Chancellor, he has been so kind. He has been taking care of everything and putting this place. The entire credit goes to Professor Vina Kumar for his incredible leadership and putting things. So thank you once again and thank you so much for your time. We would now like to felicitate all the keynote speakers. I request all the dignitaries on the dais to please felicitate them. To start with this, I would like to call Professor Radin Burgett to please come and accept the gift as a token of respect. He is associated with Burma University of Technology, Czech Republic, and is heading six and is heading signal processing program at Six Research Center. A big round of applause, please. <laughs> Please give a great round of applause for Professor Gavin Gurley. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Professor Carlos M. Travieso Gonzalez. He is Head of Signals and Communication Department at the Institute for Technological Development and Innovation in Communication at ULPGC, Spain. He is co-author of two books, co-editor of seven preceding books, guest editor for International Journal, and also he has over 300 papers published in International Journal. A big round of applause, please. Professor Rosie Stetchy. She 
leads the research center in AI, robotics, and human machine systems at Cardiff University, United Kingdom, which is a collaboration of the schools of engineering and computer science. Professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Wayne State University, Detroit, Michigan, USA. and Universidad de la Suizera Italiano Lugano Switzerland. Professor Cesar Alepi. University of Illinois, USA. His simulation tools and system models help to describe behavior of quantum wires, quantum dots, and quantum wells. Professor Peter Beer, he currently works as the Faculty of Computer and Information Science at the University of Lausanne, European Union. He has research works in computer vision, biomatrix, and human computer interactions. Professor Stephen Pistorius. He is Professor and Associate Head in Medical Physics and Professor of Radiology. Also Vice Director and Graduate Chair of Biomedical Engineering Graduate Program at University of Manitoba, Canada. A big round of applause, please. <laughs> Professor Vera Rosinawa. She is Vice Dean of Faculty responsible for research projects and industry cooperation and Director of Industrial Research Center. She is from Bratislava, Slovak Republic, European Union. Professor Pierre Morosio is from Institut de Mathematique de Toulouse University, Paul Sabatier, Toulouse, France. His research interest includes inverse problem optimization, convex analysis, and application. <laughs> Professor Khan Ibtukaruddin. Professor Khan is Associate Dean for Research and Graduate Program, Director of Vision Lab at Bayton College of Engineering and Technology, Old Dominion University, USA. <laughs> Professor Sobhaji Stephanoides, he is University Distinguished Professor of Physics and Engineering, 
William A. and Nanny F. McCain Professor of Physics and Professor of Electrical Engineering, Vanderbilt University, USA. Also distinguished visiting scientist at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, USA. His research focuses on the structure of different diamonds and electronic properties of electronic material, radiation effect, transport in molecules and thin films and catalysis. He was named Fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics in the 2015 for the contribution of point defect dynamics in semiconductor devices. <coughs> professor Duan B. Wong. He is Professor in the School of Electrical and Data Engineering, Faculty of Engineering and Information Technology, University of Technology, Sydney, Australia. and the LSU Center for Computation and Technology, Louisiana University, USA. <laughs> Professor Hammond Wettelzaki. He is in the Department of Electronic and Communication Engineering in the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, USA. He has expertise in the areas of modeling and simulation of continuous and discrete systems. Professor Martin is head of the Automation Research Group and full professor of Automation at the Department of Electrical Engineering at Commerce University of Technology, Gothenburg, Sweden. Science 
and a senior research scientist with the Institute for Software Integrated System, Vanderbilt University, and Nashville, USA.
USA. He was the fleet chairman and finally got disappeared. After that, the FC colleague from Bombay, he formed this India section. And slowly and slowly then it was went to the Madras section and Delhi section. And finally we are having 11 sections in our country. And in this 11 section, the Uttar Pradesh is one of them. So all the section chairs, basically we are having one consortium where we decide to be an India Council and it is recognized by IPP USA. So currently for 2019 and 2020 I am the India Council Chair to see the, how we can give the benefit to our the members. A lot of things are there, a lot of even the rumors are all there, a lot of negativity about IEEE, many many people say here and there, but basically the IEEE, you can see the tagline, it is technology for humanity. I already tried to help in terms of advancement of the technology for the deprived people, for the reaching to the mass, and that is the main point. I am also representing even though Region 10, because all IEEE basically existing more than 160 countries, and this it is divided in 10 regions. One to six regions only in the US. Then we are having the region five and region six. They are basically in the Canada and the Latin American countries. Region eight is your Europe and Africa, and region nine is basically we belongs to Asia Pacific and Africa, where I am the CRIA conference and technical seminar chair. Now I am the vice chair technical activity. So the technically basically the conferences are mushrooming all across the globe, not only in India and China, but all across the globe. And there's a two types of conferences, one is a financially sponsored, another is a technically sponsored. Technically sponsored conferences, basically only we give the technical sponsorship. Those papers are basically uploaded to IEEE Explore after certain review and guidelines. And another is the financial conferences where IEEE gives some money also, and based on that, it is financially. So there's two types of events are happening, and the recently IEEE put a restriction that the technically co-sponsored conferences should not mushroom in. It was happening in India. I can tell you every day we are having two to three conferences all across the world sponsored by IEEE. So such a large, almost 2,000 conferences every year that is sponsored by IEEE. There are many conferences which is not even coming to the notice of IEEE that is only just like an event. So it is an enormous number of conferences are happening. So the always if you are going in mushrooming, always there is a challenge how to maintain the quality of the conference. That's why you already see here the 400 paper approximately only 68 papers are accepted. Yeah, 70 papers are accepted, 68 are the serious of those will be presented. Always we have a restriction on the privacy issue. We have the, even though these scheme ideas, many, many rounds. And after that also, after the presentation of the paper, there is no guarantee that all the paper will be included because it will be again going for another round of reviews. Reviews means only to see the scope and also the collaboration, what is the similar team, etc. So we try to maintain the quality and that's why the IEEE publications is one of the highest and that's why these people are coming forward. So we are trying to, at our UP section, earlier it was having 25 conferences per year, now we have come down, now it is not more than 50. So we are trying to have a good conferences, quality conferences, and that will be again benefit to our members. Always there is a debate whether we should go for the conferences more or not. But people say, why to become the knightful member if there is no advantage? So a lot of debatable issues are there that will be up there. Now coming to the conference. First, I will always ask the question why to have the conference? Why to have the FDP? Many, many questions just you can ask. But the, you can publish your paper in the various journals and transactions. And you know the values are much, much more compared to the conference paper. But the conferences are the platform where you can convey your ideas, you can convince your ideas, and you can be connected with the people. That is one of the values. The paper spend only those are reading, they know, but you cannot meet such a people and the sitting. So you can make the friend, friend in terms of your peers, in your areas, and you can get a lot of things. So the quality conference always will say if the good speakers are there, good papers are there, and good, of course, other social arguments and other things should be there. And I believe this conference is one of the examples of this. You can see there is a 35 people from even across the globe. And they are all the IEEE fellows approximately, and they are the eminent in their own areas. Try to interact, try to get the value. So that's here, I, even though the name also it was highly debatable in IEEE, I could be say we will not give the ICCA because some people were ICCA 
it was taken by somebody else in abbreviation also. So that you can say IC3 was what was used. And always the C3, I say convey, connect, and convince. So it is the platform where you can make your friends, you can try to get as much as possible. So conference here, even though we are having your ideas, just you can excel, you can discuss, where you cannot meet the people which is not possible, only you can read their papers. So this is a good opportunity. You try to get the maximum fruits of this event. I really I thank the organizers and also I thank the Vinay Patakji and the Vice Chancellor. No doubt we are communicating about this conference for almost one more than one year or so. And finally we converse that we should have and we should host in this lecture and AKTU. So this is the I think first great conference. Although conferences people are putting the international. You will find the international conference is there, no international person is there at all. No even the paper. So that is not the truth. You can see really the true international where more than 18 country people are here and almost 25, 35 speakers are there. I believe that this will be one of the landmark for this AKTU and I hope it should continue in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I would now like to invite our chief guest, Professor Manindra Agrawal, Deputy Director, IIT Kanpur, to please address the gathering. to view it as a system of differential equations, but rather to 
view the entire system's evolution as an algorithm. So there are no differential equations, and even if there are differential equations, these are getting replaced by an algorithm. Uh, the criticism of this perspective is that uh, differential equations, and that, that's from a certain purist perspective, that differential equations are the real way of capturing it. <laughs> But the, since the system is so complex that the differential equations cannot be solved, therefore you replace it with something approximate, which is the algorithm. But if you think about it, even differential equations are really an approximation of the real phenomena that is happening. It's, a, it's an abstraction, an idealization, and it, the solution of differential equation never perfectly predicts the phenomena. The, the system's evolution. It is always gives you some a solution which is within a certain error bound. So it's uh, hard to argue that there is one best way of looking at a system or understanding a phenomenon. And everything else is, uh, is merely an approximation. And in fact, the, on the positive side of the algorithmic uh, view is that the algorithmic view allows us to understand and study far more complex systems than the you know, system of differential equations do. And the effects of these are being felt these days across just about every domain of scientific inquiry, uh, be it uh, sociology, where the large societal systems are being modeled as a uh, large connected graph and then various structures are being identified using algorithms for clustering and uh, similar techniques. Uh, economics where uh, the behavior of uh, various individuals participating in an economic activity is again being uh, modeled as uh, everybody operating an algorithm and then collectively there is multiple algorithms, how do they collectively behave is what is studied. Uh, biology, of course everybody knows about biology, there is such a tremendous set of applications that are being found even from the, uh, uh, the operations or the actions within a cell which are again being modeled as an uh, algorithmic uh, system to predicting even much larger phenomena within uh, biological system. Then of course uh, some a system which are not so uh, physical that sense, which is called cyber physical systems is the interaction of the computing system with the physical system. This is getting more and more ubiquitous. In fact, your smartphone is an example of a cyber physical system. It is even cars are becoming a cyber physical system. There is tremendous amount of computing sitting inside a car and which is driving the the, the lot of actions within the car. And so on. There are so many other examples. So these developments over the last couple of decades have really uh, brought in a fresh perspective to the scientific study of various phenomena. And I would say this domain or this perspective is still evolving. We are still not fully at a stage where we can uh, establish some fundamental principles of uh, this way of doing things. So there is tremendous scope of research here, there is tremendous scope of uh, understanding, and increasing our understanding here and uh, uh, events like the ones happening here and elsewhere are very important in developing this understanding. And especially I will address to all the students sitting here that uh, this is a great time to be working in the computing domain. There is so much scope for work, there is so many opportunities.
so many new directions that are opening up that uh, uh, if you put your heart and mind into it, uh, you can do tremendously well. Uh, the uh, advent of uh, two uh, more recent phenomena. One actually, one is more recent, the other one was actually both were kind of in their infancy for a long time and they have really picked up speed over the last few years. So, so I just want to specifically mention these two approaches. One is uh, machine learning. So machine learning or uh, which is another similar name earlier which was being used for artificial intelligence. So that has been around for almost five decades. But uh, it's only last decade or so that it has really acquired a strength to be applied in all kinds of domains. That's a one very exciting direction that uh, has opened up. The other, probably everybody has heard recently about this race to build a quantum computer, which is uh, being led by Google, IBM, and several other companies. Each one is claiming that they have built the first no, not trivial quantum computer, although it's, uh, everybody else is trying to contradict that claim. But the fact remains that there is a huge amount of uh, excitement about the quantum computers because uh, some of the algorithms they can execute much faster than on the typical classical computer. So that's another very exciting dimension. And this, all these make the computing today is a wonderful area to be in. Of course, with all the great things come the uh, the bad, bad side of it also. Which, uh, and computing also is no different. We have uh, with the ubiquity of computing everywhere comes the ubiquity of cyber attacks everywhere. And, uh, something that uh, is getting increasingly uh, invasive, it's getting increasingly more dangerous because as the computing spreads all over, uh, the possibilities of uh, misuse of that and uh, illegal use of that is increasing and it's getting like our, today our all major utilities your systems are all computing based and the remote access to them through a cyber attack can be very dangerous. So this is also an area where uh, ideally one would not like this to be there at all but uh, it's the unfortunate fact of life that uh, we have to address this aspect of computing as well. So for many of you this is also something that will may excite you. Will there are one great opportunities here as well because we still don't have uh, a theory of building systems which can guarantee certain basic level of cyber security from cyber attacks. Everything is still done in a uh, patchwork way. So that is uh, still not uh, something which we would like to, as we go along in the future, we would like to uh, create systems which uh, come with certain guarantees of security. So, these are some of the uh, aspects of computing today which uh, are very important and going into the future they will become increasingly important. And the impact of computing in our lives is bound to get bigger and bigger. So, I, with these words, I wish my uh, best for the, this conference, which is happening over the next few days, and I am very sure that all the participants will uh, get wonderful information and uh, ideas from this and go back. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, sir, for sharing such knowledge. And that is definitely true that we are living in an age of artificial intelligence, where the thing can go from alpha zero to alpha go. So uh, now uh, I would like to invite Professor Harold Perdue for a short address. Professor Harold is the dean of Graduate School, School of Computing. Also, he is Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, University of Alabama, USA. So. Actually, uh, Professor Dutt asked me to come up and speak very briefly because most people in the acting have to speak Hindi. to find meaning. But, but I just enjoyed those words immensely. That was tr tremendous. I'm often asked, why did you learn Hindi? Uh, killed my Hindi signal Shurukya. I don't know why. Like Krishna told us, I'm not going to do it. So, I don't know. I don't know. Lakin, men must keep me in my own mind, could say, man is socha, thinking to myself, man a barakwali classic was to hippia, a barakwali basha me, parana chattata, that I wanted to read classical Indian literature in an Indian language. Like, well, Hindi, Kyunki, Kyunki, Hindi, Sanskrit, Nilti, Jyoti, I know. They're, they're sort of similar. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you say, the Sanskrit, Angres, Anuad, say, in the translation from Sanskrit to English, copy, or Chorga, there would be meaning lost in that translation. So, a good man, Hindi, you know, Bhagavad Gita, Uda Harkili, Bhagavad Gita, like the Bhagavad Gita. If I can read it in Sanskrit or Hindi, Shayad Maya Bhagavad Gita Ki Art Sita Samaj Sakta, that I could understand the meaning directly. This is my Hindi signal Shru Kya, that's why I learned to start from Hindi, and please ask me for Hindi. Only God knows. But uh, I wish everybody uh, a very productive conference, and I hope you find meaning in all the sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. And that was amazing. Okay. Now, I would like to invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Vinay Kumar Patra, to please come and say a few words. Good morning to everybody. Before I start my uh, speech, I really we have got uh, one of our colleagues, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Shakuntala University, Professor Ranadish Pasek. I want to uh, request my deputy staff to welcome him also on this occasion. He's in the audience, please. <laughs> so, it's a university of uh, uh, different event, and he's a person. Uh, science graduate and came from Allahabad University and is trying to reshape that university uh, in a different way. And uh, our university and his university have got an MOU. The chief guest of the, chief guest of the occasion, Professor Malinda Agarwalji, who is uh, one of our mentor and visionary person, solved an open problem uh, in the computing and well known for Padamshi Award, Fellow of Academic Sciences, and uh, uh, got a very good prize in the mathematics, uh, which equates or which is equivalent to the Nobel Prize because there is no Nobel Prize in the mathematics. Uh, so he is today on the dais and has given a speech. Professor Essen Singh was also an accomplished researcher, a friend who is uh, having a university, uh, which is a contemporary university, a residential university. MNU to Gorakhpur. I want to welcome him and Ashish, who is a batchmate of mine, now heading the IEEE section at Allahabad. Uh, other colleagues, 
from the executive and I really want to welcome all the speakers, keynote speakers who have come and traveled across to this magnificent country and uh, other delegates, directors and our young friends who, has, who are there at the store. I really want to emphasize the country in which uh, we are hosting a kind of a, this workshop. I think the uh, previous speaker has told something about Hindi, Sanskrit and all those things. But before start, the first speech of the first uh, shloka, which was told by uh, our one of the person who has started this workshop, uh, which is, uh, I will repeat uh, uh, that slow for uh, another for uh, slow for you, which is Om Poon Madha Poon Vidam Poona Poonam Mudhichate Poonashya Poonamai Poon Meva Vashasthe. In fact, this country has got a leading traditions of science technology, and those science technology are actually uh, mentioned with the kind of the religion. And this shloka is one of the great examples, which I think uh, centuries before have told that infinity plus infinity can be infinity, and infinity minus infinity can be also infinity. So those kind of things and those kind of achievements has been done. And uh, uh, so I welcome you to this country, uh, which has established, uh, discovered zero, discovered uh, these kind of languages, which are easily passed and uh, which are uh, today all the natural language processing uh, have also proved that Sanskrit is one of the languages which can be most scientifically passed and try to get an understand. Before that, I want, uh, I really want to welcome to all of you this biggest technical university. As a vice chancellor, my function this university has got 756 affiliating colleges. Uh, most of the people in the world and the globe cannot imagine that one university can control uh, the 756 college. And as Uttar Pradesh uh, also is a very big state, uh, which can be easily told that 11 to 12 European countries can come into one state. Uh, this kind of big state we have. Uh, we have really 3 lakh students uh, with us who are pursuing their BTEC. Uh, uh, degrees, B Pharma, MCA, and we all the professional degrees. And we are here in this university trying to give an access, uh, trying to give uh, to all the students a research ecosystem. I really want to uh, have a great applaud for our uh, person who has conceived this workshop, Professor M.P. Dutta, from all of you. Uh, he has been I think one of the biggest research events in the term of the conference which AKT is hosting. AKT is well known for all other kind of works. Uh, it is, uh, we are also launching an e-consortium where we are uh, giving all the research journals accessing to all the freelance students. Uh, we are also trying to do a lot of innovations and a lot of other things. Uh, but this is the first tone of uh, conference uh, which is there for all of you, for all of the students and uh, it was a great, amazing thing for the Vice Chancellor that when we opened, uh, we had a great discussion that if we open the registration, the number of students or the participants will be very less because how to reach and how to access. Uh, but it was to our utter surprise that more than 4,000 people, more than 4,000 students uh, uh, really uh, got, uh, uh, really uh, have taken interest and came to this workshop. One very important thing which I really want to say at this juncture, and I think Maninda sir has already told, and we were doing the first course at IIT Kharagpur on artificial intelligence, reading all those A star and all the algorithms. Uh, we never thought uh, that artificial intelligence uh, will pick up like this after, I think, 20 years before, 20 years after, in this kind of a way. Uh, there were very few MTech and BTech students who wanted at that time to do and pursue research or do some projects in the field of artificial intelligence. Only we used to take that course and that the Nelson book we used to read and uh, that's all. And we thought that 
uh, this uh, kind of science or this kind of engineering, uh, whether it will pick up or not pick up. Or I remember uh, uh, my professor was telling what is AI, so he was telling that it's something which is appropriate and policy uh, heuristics and all other kind of things he was telling. Uh, so uh, that's the first kind of evaluation we have. But as we are moving towards the fourth industrial revolution, <coughs> and people say that uh, the first industrial revolution occurred when steam engine was discovered, second when we discovered the electricity, third when we discovered the radio waves to the internet, and the fourth uh, when the man and machine is going to be one. And the last 10 years, uh, the kind of disruption we have seen uh, uh, just uh, uh, we are at the urge that when the IC engines will disappear and this will happen in our lifetime. Uh, the car which is worth having at 18,000 moving parts is going to have 18 <coughs> moving parts or 18 parts we will have new cars uh, sitting computers on those kind of things. Uh, we will have a new health technology uh, which will be more uh, with a non-invasive and having all the details and data <coughs> from the clouds all we have in non invasive devices uh, on our wrist or on our lockets. Uh, we are moving to the education, uh, which is no more an education in a brick and mortar structure, uh, moving towards the uh, most of the MOOCs courses, uh, most of the things happening in a virtual space, uh, music and other technologies, uh, moving to the YouTube and all other things. The kind of disruption which has happened in the last 10 years, it's, uh, I was reading an IBM's report. Uh, which is saying that uh, uh, it's a very difficult part and difficult thing uh, for the scientists and the engineers also to predict uh, which technology to teach because in 2030 that report says we don't know which technology will exist. And that's the real point uh, which is people are saying that in 2030 what will be the new technology, what for our students should be prepared and what we should teach in those kind of technology. So that, that's a hard I don't know uh, whether Manindra is working on such kind of algorithm uh, which may predict what kind of technology we should teach in 2030. This is a really difficult kind of thing. But one important thing uh, which we really want to say that uh, out of the two technologies uh, on the artificial things and all other things, this university is working very hard. Uh, we are trying to have two courses, uh, one on the artificial intelligence and uh, other on the emerging technology. Teaching 100 students and teaching 4 lakh students simultaneously is uh, uh, totally in a different kind of a domain. Uh, but this university is trying uh, to have the researchers, uh, to have uh, uh, the kind of the courses in the new area and the new dimension. I hope that uh, uh, when most of the engineering problem in a classical domain are solved, uh, basically uh, we are, have solved most of the civil engineering problems, mechanical engineering problems, uh, we have solved electrical engineering problems. Most of the uh, engineering problems are solved. So the engineering uh, disciplines are merging and uh, we are moving towards solving uh, most of the uh, problems uh, which have a confluence or the convergence of the engineering and biology, engineering and biological systems. So there will be new kind of uh, engineering, maybe protein engineering, uh, maybe new kind of biomedical engineering, and new bioscience kind of engineering. I think uh, the today's workshop and today uh, conference is around all these kind of new technologies. Uh, the team, uh, there is a very handful team uh, which has proposed, uh, Professor Datta, Ashish Ji, Hassan Singh Saab, all have worked hard and put this conference into these kind of uh, uh, tracks. And I hope uh, that this is the first conference where we have to have got 68 papers. And uh, this is one of the biggest conferences which AKT has hosted. I welcome you all once again and see that what will be the generation next technology. And it's a good uh, conference in the sense that all of the keynote speakers, with them all of the new researchers and our students and the researchers We'll have a brainstorming, uh, we'll have their views, and from this uh, we can uh, take forward a new dimension, a new light of hope uh, to the new kind of uh, humanity and new kind of uh, technology uh, which will have, which the world will have in the next generation.
I really want to uh, thanks all of you, uh, especially the keynote speakers who have come uh, with the jet lag and then uh, also for having uh, come into this kind of wonderful city. Uh, the Defense Expo is, is also there in the city. If anybody of you are interested in uh, seeing the Defense Expo, we will also arrange the tickets and passes for the Defense Expo. You can, can like Professor Dutta. Uh, this is one of the biggest uh, defense show which is happening uh, concurrently with this kind of a conference. We are really uh, also want to say that uh, most of you are eminent speakers and eminent professors and researchers from the different part of the uh, globe and we have got our colleges also from uh, the UP state so they can have one to one uh, memorandum of understanding I should not say uh, but uh, the intent if any of the people wants or any of the students want that uh, they can meet these professors and uh, utilize this kind of uh, uh, opportunity uh, to meet them and uh, especially from ourselves I will request my uh, Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, the Director Cass, and the uh, Dean Research also to look forward for any kind of uh, uh, collaboration uh, with the kind of the professors we have. I wish all of you a wonderful stay uh, in this country, uh, which is, I think, a country of an, from an ancient time, an ancient civilization, and which has also uh, gone into the times of science, technology, and religion far apart. So we welcome you again, uh, wish you a great uh, uh, day and wish you a great time in the three days of the conference and wish all of others and wish this conference great success. Thank you very much. Thank you sir. Now I would like to invite all the dignitaries sitting on the dais and all the foreign delegates to kindly come on the stage for the group photograph. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Now, I would like to call upon Mr. Nandlal Singh, Registrar AKTU, for his words of vote of thanks. So, It gives me immense pleasure to propose the word of thanks on this memorable occasion. First of all, I thank Almighty God for making this conference a possibility. I request His grace to be with us. Now I thank of our chief guest, Professor Manindar Agrawal Padam Sri, Deputy Director, IIT Kanpur. Professor S. N. Singh B. C. Madan Mohan Malavi, University of Technology, Gorakhpur. My V. C. Sri Vinay Kumar Pathak sir. Professor Vineet Kansal sir, Pro V. C. AKTU. Professor M. K. Dutta, Conference Chair, Dean PG and Research, Professor Dev Sarkar, Baba Sahib Ambedkar University, Maharashtra, Director Kais Manish Gaur Sir, Director IIT Paliwal Sir, Director Architecture Bandana Sangal Mandam. I would like also to thank Madam Mohan Malvi University of Technology, Gorakhpur, and Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Technological University, Maharashtra, for their collaboration with APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University for this conference. A special thanks our professors and keynote speakers from various countries. A special thanks for students and volunteers of our university and issued guys. The aim of this conference is to provide a platform for researchers, engineers, industry professionals across the globe to share their research outcomes and also to impact, impart research experience in contemporary computing and applications for educating researchers and students. Lastly, in eight keynote sessions, two panel discussions and twelve paper presentation sessions will be taking about modern computing trends like artificial intelligence and big data. I hope the knowledge imparted here would be more like chocolate and less like medicine. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to request all of you to please stand up for our national anthem. <laughs>
so the formal uh, uh, inaugural session comes to an end. Now it's all informal. You can relax. There is tea, coffee arrangement for you. Uh, we come back here at 2:30 p.m. after lunch for two keynote uh, talks and one panel discussion. So from here, you, uh, from here on, it's completely informal. Have a nice time. Great. Have a great night. So there is an announcement of lunch. I request all the dignitaries and the foreign delegates to join for lunch. And the directors of our government institutes and the directors of voluntary institutes are requested to join for lunch in the three rooms of this hall on the same floor. And all the 